Hello everyone, I'm back! Oh my god, I've been off YouTube for a week and it feels like a friggin' eternity. And I know a lot of you were worried about me, so thank you for that. Because I'm always on here blathering on about how I've never missed uploading new videos a single Wednesday the entire time I've been YouTubing. And then I go and miss a Wednesday. So understandably, a lot of people were freaking out, they thought something happened to me. And well, yeah, something happened to me. But it wasn't health related, I didn't get in some terrible car accident. I just went to jail. That's right, jail. <laughs> YouTube jail, <laughs> to be more precise. Uh, by the way, do you like this awesome swinging egg chair we got at the compound? It's a great place to sit and enjoy the amazing view, which let me go ahead and show you the view. Just sitting here swinging, looking out at the beautiful open desert on a warm spring evening. Finally, it got warm. I mean, it was it was cold here. I was wearing a puffer jacket up until about two weeks ago. But then all of a sudden, bam, it's 90 degrees today. And it actually feels amazing. But anyway, back to me being in YouTube jail. That's right, there's a, such a thing as YouTube jail. Basically, if you do something bad, if you screw up, YouTube can block you from posting for a week or even two weeks or even permanently. So what happened in my case is I didn't realize I did anything wrong. Uh, it was an honest mistake and I have to be very careful about how I talk about this, but well, if you watched the last video I uploaded, which was me wearing a puffer jacket all freezing cold, standing right over there. I mean, the weather has really changed dramatically. Anyway, just whatever it was, 10 days ago, standing there in my puffer coat with my knit cap, you know, going on about this and going on about that. And I was promoting our big firehouse fundraiser party that we're having here on Saturday, 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 April 15th. Anyway, I had a little ad for that firehouse fundraiser and then I started talking about you know, things that were going on in my life and how, well, my ad revenue from YouTube has been way down lately. And I thought it was just me. I thought I was a loser. Everybody was bored of me. Nobody wanted to watch me anymore. But then come to find out, no, it's been going on with a lot of creators. Uh, ad revenue is down all over YouTube. Something to do with either shorts, you know, those stupid vertical short form videos that they're pushing because they're trying to compete with TikTok and I hate them. So I'm going to turn my camera the other way now. Anyway, uh, this ad revenue decline either has something to do with them focusing on shorts or I think advertisers in general might just be tightening their belts because there's supposedly a recession coming. Anyway, whatever the cause is, I'm not the only one making less money. It's happening to a bunch of us, which still sucks but at least I know it's not just me. Oh, it is so peaceful out here right now. Listen, can't hear a sound, uh, except for the sound of some ninny sitting in a swinging chair blathering to the internet on her cell phone. Anyway, so in that video, I was talking about how, okay, I'm not making as much money anymore. I need to diversify my income, okay? Most creators don't make their entire income just off of ad revenue, which, if you didn't see that video, I'll just give you a quick explainer. Not that many people saw that video because it got taken down. Anyway, ad revenue is the money you make as a YouTuber from those commercials that they play on your videos, okay? You know, you're watching YouTube and you gotta sit through the friggin' commercial at the beginning and, well, I always skip it and I know most people probably skip it, but some people click on them and I don't know, there's all kinds of different ways it all works out and you get paid based on people watching your channel. Now that's a pretty significant chunk of my income, but most other YouTubers don't count on ad revenue. They do sponsorships or brand deals, you know, let me stop and take a minute to tell you about NordVPN, or let me stop and take a minute to tell you about HelloFresh, the meal delivery service, you know, stuff like that. Well, I don't do any of those things. They feel corny and weird to me, but I had figured out a way to sell something and I have to be very careful. I can't, talk about it on YouTube anymore. I didn't realize this is a, it was in violation of their terms of service or their community standards. We'll just go ahead and call them uh, magic beans. Okay. You know, like Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack bought those magic beans. Remember his, his mom gave him some money to go to the market and buy a cow, but instead of buying a cow, he bought some magic beans from a gypsy. I wonder if it was the same gypsy woman who sold me my magic bikini. 
could be. Anyway, magic beans is what I'm gonna call these things that I was selling that come to find out you're not allowed to sell on YouTube. And I had no idea. It was a completely honest mistake and I'm going to be very careful from here on out. Never, ever, ever, ever to mention them again. Anyway, there I was blathering to the camera talking about something I guess I wasn't allowed to be talking about. I feel like Edith Ann. Remember Edith Ann? I think it was like Sesame Street back in the day. It was uh, Lily Tomlin. She was supposed to be a little girl sitting in that rocking chair. <laughs> That's what I kind of feel like. Anyway, yeah, come to find out you ain't allowed to talk about, um, I think they're, the way they phrased it was regulated pharmaceuticals. Uh, you're not allowed to, well, you can talk about them. You just can't promote the sale of them. So I guess technically I could say the word and talk about them, but I'm, oh, I'm scared straight now. I don't want to get, uh, well, I'll go into that in a minute. Anyway, you're not allowed to promote the sales of regulated pharmaceuticals on YouTube, unless you're an advertiser, because one of my viewers told me he did see ads on another video for a company that makes magic beans, but as a creator, you're not allowed to promote sales or drive people to an external website that promotes the sale of regulated pharmaceuticals. I think everybody can figure out what I'm talking about. Am I right? So, because I was talking about regulated pharmaceuticals and violating YouTube's terms of service, I got what's called a strike against my channel. Okay, this is different from getting demonetized. You might have heard me and other creators complain about, uh, sometimes if you talk about like a controversial topic or firearms or, you know, drug content, they'll demonetize your video. And that just means they put a yellow light on it and they won't show ads or they won't show as many ads on it because most advertisers aren't comfortable having their ads shown on a video about firearms or marijuana or whatever. So they take the ads off the video. You don't make any money, but it's really, it's not that big of a deal. Getting a strike is a much bigger deal because if you get a strike against your channel, first of all, they take the video down altogether. And secondly, you're blocked from posting anything to YouTube for an entire week. And third, well, you only get three strikes. After your third strike, they will permanently disable your channel. Huh, yikes. Definitely don't want that to happen. Well, I didn't know what was going on. I put my video up and I was a little bit peeved because it did, it got demonetized right off the bat. And I thought, get out of town. What, 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 what in that video was offensive? You know, and not only did it get demonetized, it actually got rated 18 plus, like oh, suitable for those 18 and older only, which means they'll only show that video to you if you're logged into a YouTube account and you've proven that you're over 18. Well, most people don't like logging into their YouTube account. They just want to watch YouTube videos, you know, for privacy reasons. They don't want to log into the Google, and I understand that. So consequently, hardly anybody even saw that video when I posted it before it got taken down because it was rated 18 and over. And I was, I mean, I was literally scratching my head trying to figure out what in that video could have possibly warranted an 18 and over rating. And I even asked on Facebook and I asked people, what do you watch the video and you tell me I can't figure it out. So people thought, well, I was wearing yoga pants in the video and I showed my butt in the yoga pants. I mean, fully clothed, but in yoga pants. I didn't think that was it. Then in another part of the video, I talked about, oh, I guess I got to tighten my belt, but I'm not wearing a belt. And so then I turned the camera down like this to my waistband and kind of pulled at it just like that. I didn't show anything. I just kind of went like that. So some people thought that's what it was that got it flagged 18 and over. And then I was talking about uh, the poker run. I was talking about how we're doing a poker run as part of this firehouse fundraiser thing. And so another person thought like, oh, well, it's because you were talking about poker gambling. No, come to mind, it wasn't any of those things. And honestly, I probably just should have kept my mouth shut because, well, no, I was frustrated and I felt like it was an injustice. So I appealed it. You can actually appeal these decisions at YouTube and they'll take it a step above and they'll put it before a human reviewer. Because the first, I guess the first reviewer, like if it gets a, a, a yellow light or whatever, that's just an AI or like an algorithm or whatever that goes through content, just kind of scans for nudity or talking about whatever firearms, drugs, cussing too much. So that's the, the first kind of scan. Now, if you appeal it, then it goes to this human reviewer, but the human reviewers are in the Philippines, okay? They outsource it to the Philippines, it's cheaper. But the Philippines is a very culturally conservative country, okay? And so 
I've had many, many, many videos demonetized, given that yellow light because they were inappropriate. Blah, 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 blah. And a lot of time it's like, like, I just, in fact, I posted one oh, about a month ago where I went to an old cabin in the desert, and the name of the video was something like, Historic Cabin, Sadly Trashed by Idiots. Well, that video got demonetized because I was using hate speech or something in, in the title, and the thumbnail. Like, I said, idiots. If you can't even say the word idiots anymore, then we as a nation are doomed. Well, we as a nation are already doomed, but I won't get into that today. This video is all about me and YouTube jail. Anyway... My video got flagged 18 and over. I appealed it. Of course, the Filipino reviewer agreed. Oh, no, no, this is 18 and over. What in this video is 18 and over? I just don't get it. So then I took it a step higher, and this is where I screwed up. Uh, as a creator, I didn't realize, but you can actually contact creator support, and they'll look into it for you. And so some woman, supposedly, it was probably a robot, but she said she was a woman, looked into it for me, and she was very nice and very helpful. But because I brought it to that level of attention, they gave it a close enough look and went, Aha! Uh -huh. She was promoting sales of magic beans on an external website. And next thing I knew, whoosh, not only did my video have a yellow light, and not only was my video not eligible for ad revenue, my video was taken down altogether, and I had a strike issued against my account. Okay, I freaked out because I already knew in the back of my mind, you only get three strikes and then you're out. They'll disable your account altogether. They'll take down all your videos. They'll, all your subscribers are gone. It just goes up in a puff of dust as if nothing ever happened. As if all the seven years I've spent laboring, and I do mean laboring, editing and uploading these videos every week, it would have all been gone. Or I should say it would all be gone if I got three strikes. Well, the reason I was so nervous is I did have a strike on my channel already from like, gosh, 2016 or 2017, way back when I first started my channel, before I was serious about it, before I was making a living at it, I went to a hot spring and I had an underwater GoPro <laughs> and I put the GoPro underwater and showed my butt cheeks underwater. Oh, I know, call the police, call the fireman, call the mayor, like call the governor, this is terrible. Well, apparently that's terrible enough in YouTube world that they did issue a strike against my channel for it. And so all these years I've been operating, thinking in the back of my mind, like, oh man, I already have one strike. I only have two more. I got to run a real tight ship and be squeaky clean. So when I got this new strike, I really freaked out. You know, first thing I logged into my YouTube account. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? But then I noticed, and this is actually kind of cool, YouTube changed their policy. So now, whereas before when I got that first strike, strikes were like diamonds. They were forever, forever. Now, <laughs> strikes are not like diamonds. Strikes expire in 90 days. Woo! So that old strike I had had long ago expired. And this new strike I have uh, only goes for 90 days. So what it essentially means is I was blocked from posting any content on YouTube for one week. And it happened to fall on a Tuesday, which the very next day was Wednesday. I had two videos fully edited and ready to go, but they wouldn't let me post them. So it took seven long days to come around to the next Tuesday today. Well, actually, I'm shooting this the day before, but it's going live today, Tuesday. Anyway, I wasn't able to post anything that whole time and people were freaking out. And I don't think anybody was freaking out as much as I was. Because like I said, like this whole notion of strikes really had me twisted. I was freaked out. So I first thing I did was go in and go, okay, well, I got to take down every other video that I talked about my magic beans in. So unfortunately, I had to take down the one where I went to the trade show in Las Vegas wearing my Mary Jane showgirl costume. Obviously, because that was one big solid ad for my magic beans. And it's funny in retrospect, that they didn't strike that down like immediately. But again, it's because I brought this one to their attention. Remember, I escalated it even above the appeal to creator support. And that's the only way they really knew. I mean, if you think about how many millions of videos are on YouTube, it's really hard for them to, you know, find out someone's doing something wrong unless it's brought to their attention by either a hater or in my case, the idiot creator themselves. Anyway, I had to take down the trade show video, which really pained me to do because it had 
gosh, I had like over 122,000 views. I had a lot of views and it was generating a lot of buzz for my beans. <laughs> Uh, but whatever, I'm not done taking chances. I took that video down. I took down the video where I talked about my tires at Walmart, my Walmart rant. I had to take that down too because, well, in that video, I also promoted the beans. And so that had to go. And then, oh gosh, I was so nervous that I even took down a third video that I probably didn't have to, uh, which was when I toured one of my neighbors has a, a grow house, a grow operation, a farm for that product that I'm even afraid to say now, even though you, I'm pretty sure you can still talk about it, you just can't promote the sales of it. Anyway, I was freaked out. I took that video down too. I thought, okay, whew. I scrubbed my channel of any reference to these magic beans. I should be okay. Now I just have to sit and wait. That's right, I just had to sit and wait. And it was really frustrating because there was nothing I could do to let everyone know what was going on. You know, like if I want to reach my audience and let them know why I'm not posting new content, well, I'd have to go on YouTube and post something to say, hey guys, sorry, I'm not able to post any videos this week because I'm in YouTube jail. Well, I'm in YouTube jail. I can't post anything. So I did what I could. I posted on my Facebook and I posted on my Instagram and I posted on my Twitter. Uh, but I don't, I mean, not, not everybody follows me on those three. I have a pretty big Facebook following, but not everybody's on Facebook. Rightly so. A lot of people hate Facebook and I completely understand why. So, you know, those folks were informed of what was going on. But then there was, I was still getting a bunch of email from people, you know, Hey, Wonder Hussie, we're worried about you. And it was actually, it was actually really cool. We're worried about you, Wonder Hussie. You've never missed a Wednesday. And, you know, our morning rituals, we like to sit down with our cup of coffee and watch your videos, but... There's no videos. What's going on? Are you okay? I mean, I got a bunch of email like that. And so I answered everybody. Oh, sorry. I'm in YouTube jail, blah, blah, blah. Tried to explain what was going on, but I figured, God, oh, there's gotta be some way, somewhere I can post to let people know what's going on. So I do have a personal website, a blog, wonderhussy.com. I haven't kept it up lately. I used to write a blog before I started YouTubing. When I was working as a model, uh, I wrote a really, I thought, pretty interesting and well-written blog about all my weird adventures as a model. And, you know, you can go read it. It's all still up there. But because I was working as a nude model, there was a lot of nude photos. And so some people aren't comfortable going there and reading that. And I don't know. Basically, the website needs cleaning up, but it's still there. And it's my website that I can do whatever I want with and advertise whatever I want on. Anyway, I went to my blog and I wrote a post there saying, hey guys, here's what happened. I'm in YouTube jail, blah, blah, blah. And actually a few people did find me that way. I got at least a couple comments from people going, we didn't know what happened to you. So we just Googled this wonder hussy okay. And this website came up. So that helped reach a couple more people, but it got me thinking, all this got me thinking that I am completely owned by Google or Alphabet, as the company is technically called. I bet you didn't realize that, but yeah, like my W-2s come from an alphabet. <laughs> anyway, I'm completely owned by Alphabet and that's not healthy. That's not good. I mean, if they shut me down, you know, if they shut my channel down, how am I going to reach everybody? Well, it's going to be real rough because not everybody's on Facebook. So that got me thinking, I need to redo my website. Okay. Like I said, it's kind of a hot mess right now. One of the guys who works for the Magic Bean Company does SEO work. And so he did go in there and tweaked a few things for me. But, you know, to be honest, I'm not really happy with the way it looks. I want it to be a really cool, what I want my website to be is like a base camp for my adventures. Okay, you know, like when you go out hiking, backpacking, camping, well, you have like a base camp, a base of operations. I want wonderhussy.com to be a base camp for my adventures. So I have a friend here in town who does uh, web, design and business marketing and all that kind of stuff. She's going to help me put together something that I feel like fits my brand and fits my vibe. I can talk about what I've been up to lately, what's new at the compound, and I can update it more easily than, you know, making these videos is time consuming. It takes a long time to edit them. If I shoot a video, it's at least a day or two before I get it up with a blog post. You know, I can just hop on and bang out some stuff and bada bing, bada boom. Everybody will know. Oh, she's in YouTube jail. Uh-oh. And even more than just making website posts, I also am starting a mailing list, a newsletter. That's right, I'm gonna start a Wonder Hussy newsletter. Uh, probably once a month, I'll send out like a little newsletter about what's been going on at the compound, what's been going on with my adventures. You know, sometimes YouTube doesn't 
show you all the videos I've uploaded so you might have missed one or two. I'll talk about what kinds of videos I've made lately and just the latest news and any special things I'm trying to promote, stuff like that. So if you're interested in getting my newsletter, go to my website, wonderosie.com, check it out. There's a, thing, a link you can click to sign up for the newsletter there. It'll be a minute before I start sending out newsletters, but I do intend to start in the near future. Another thing I should mention is if you do go to my website now, I don't have a security certificate for it yet. Because, like I said, I wasn't really using it the last several years. I wasn't blogging. And so when GoDaddy, who, which hosts it, was like, you need to pay $80 a year to get a security so I was like, ah, nah, I don't need that. So now, consequently, you try to go to my website, it says, warning, insecure website. Well, it's not insecure. I just didn't pay for a security certificate, A. B, there's currently no... There's no, there's nothing for sale there. So it's not like you're putting in your credit card information. It's just a blog that you're reading and you can sign up for a newsletter. So you might get that warning that it's not safe. I will get a security certificate. I'm going to take care of all that with the help of my friends. It's just going to take some time. But actually, I kind of feel like in a weird way, all of this was actually almost a positive. Now I know I'm the queen of making lemonade out of lemons and uh, I've been known to be called Pollyanna by myself because I am. I try to turn every crummy situation into a positive. I try to find the silver lining in every cloud. And so with this particular cloud, <laughs> the silver lining is it made me realize that I need to have a presence outside of YouTube and have my little thing set up. Of course, I'm still going to post all my videos on YouTube and YouTube is going to be my main thing. I just need to have a base camp where I can run and hide next time they try to get me. So look for all that coming soon. Uh, not super soon. It'll probably be at least a month before I get it all together. It's a lot of work, but I just want everybody to know that there will be a place you can go and find me when you can't seem to find me where you normally find me on YouTube. And speaking of that, I was actually lucky because I have some pretty cool friends and one of my friends happens to be a miner with one leg named Ross. Many of you probably subscribe to Ross's channel. He bought a huge mine complex out in the desert that way and he lives out there totally off grid with his two adorable dogs. He's got a great thing going. He's got a great channel. Check him out. I'll put the link up here. Anyway, he helped me out by making uh, a few little videos talking about what happened to me and that let... Uh, another significant chunk of people know who might otherwise not have known what happened to me, if that makes any sense. So yeah, Ross made this whole series of videos about how he was looking for Wonder Hussy. Where's Wonder Hussy? We got to find Wonder Hussy. She's supposed to MC the Firehouse fundraiser next weekend, but we can't find her anywhere. And so in his video, he goes all over town. He even goes in the fire department. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't believe these people agreed to be in his video, but he talks to all these guys on the fire board and then he goes over to the brewery and talks to the bartender. Have you seen Wonder Hussy? We can't find Wonder Hussy. Anyway, Ross really stepped up for me. I really appreciate that, Ross. He even did a, another segment where he broke me out of YouTube jail. We went on the lam. We were hiding out in his mind. It was wild. Thank you, Ross, for letting your subscribers know what happened to me while I was away. Ah, oh, look at that. Sun is finally going down behind the hills. It's an extraordinarily balmy, peaceful evening out here on the edge of civilization in Death Valley, USA. It's a great evening to be out and about, walking around in front of the old compound, talking to my phone again. Anyway, another thing I wanted to mention was uh, this whole jail thing almost kind of seems like it was meant to be in a way. Because coincidentally, right before this happened, uh, my anklet fell off. Okay, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, you might no have noticed that I always had this red bracelet around one of my ankles. And it's a long story, but a viewer gave it to me back in 2020. Okay, like a lot of people, this decade has been really rough for me. My particular troubles started at the end of 2019, and I won't go into detail. This all happened while I was YouTubing. I just didn't talk about it on YouTube because I try to keep things classy. But anyway, I had some pretty significant ups and downs in 2020, 2021. Well, like everybody else, I feel like it's been a rough decade for a lot of people. But this viewer of mine gave me this, I don't know if it's like a Kabbalah thing. It was just a little red anklet, and it had... Oh, it had an evil eye. You know, those little 
it's like a hand with an eye in it, the evil eye, wards off the evil eye. It had a little bead like that on it too. And so, oh, okay, cool. I'm not superstitious, but I put it around my ankle and I tightened her up. It, this was like July or June even. I think it was June, 2020. Put this thing on and I wore it every single day since then. I wore it hiking. I wore it swimming. I wore it soaking. I wore it sleeping. I wore it, well, I wore it doing a lot of things, let's just say. And the other, well, maybe like two weeks ago, I was in a hot spring actually right over here and it finally fell off. It just kind of came apart. And so I thought, oh gosh, well, maybe it's a sign that I, I'm, uh, you know, evolving to another dimension. I don't need this superstitious frippery anymore. It's time for me to move on to bigger and better things. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe this thing was protecting me. And when it fell off, that's when all the trouble started. I don't know. I, I'm not superstitious, like I said. I think the dang thing just fell off because I've been wearing it for three friggin' years almost. And, you know, it was fun to wear, but it's also kind of nice to have... Well, it's also kind of nice to have naked ankles again. You know, I feel so free and light and airy. Wee like I could just dance because I'm not bound by some silly superstition. Actually, speaking of silly superstitions, we had a visitor a couple weeks ago. This guy showed up in a badass overland rig okay like i'm overlanding you know people go camping in the desert or whatever they have everything they need rooftop tent this and that well this dude had a big ass dodge ram diesel truck full-size truck with a big burly camper shell and i don't know if he had a rooftop tent i think he had a rooftop tent solar panels he had little slide out drawers of medical supplies and automotive supplies he had ever i mean it was beautiful it was i think he probably had over a hundred grand in this rig easily it was a really badass rig and he this guy does a lot of overlanding and he had just done an overlanding trip in mongolia how about that he shipped his rig to uh china 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 <laughs> he shipped his rig to china and then drove through mongolia for i don't know how long overlanding in mongolia how amazing is that well so he's showing me his amazing rig and of course everything was black and shiny and it was very manly. It was a very masculine rig, you know, none of this nonsense, you know, there were no hanging chairs on his rig. But what there were, what, what there was on his rig was he had this really cool, unexpectedly colorful decal of a, I guess it's a rooster and it had three golden bells hanging off the bottom of it. Okay, so when he drove this big, burly, manly, Dodge diesel overlanding rig around, he had this colorful little rooster with little bells tinkling hanging off the rear bumper. And I go, what's that? And he told me it's a Mongolian thing uh, to protect you from getting leprechauns on your bumper, okay? These leprechauns, when you're overlanding, these leprechauns will try to jump on your bumper and they'll cause all kinds of mechanical problems for you and you'll get a flat tire, this and that. So if you put one of these guys <laughs> on your bumper it'll protect you from evil spirits and the only catch is you can't buy one for yourself someone has to give it to you and when he saw how much i friggin loved it because i love stuff like this you know me he gave it to me and i was like oh my gosh you can't give me this like then you'll you won't have protection you know he still had more days to go on his trip he wasn't from around here and he goes no no don't worry about it i have an extra one the the person who gave it to me gave me two so you can have this one Oh man, I was so happy. I hung out right on my bumper. I took one trip to Pahrump, which is a paved road the whole way, and all three bells fell off. I don't, I can't imagine how this dude overlanded all through Mongolia and Death Valley and the bells didn't fall off. And then I take one trip to Pahrump and lose all three bells. My sister said it was probably the uh, methed out leprechauns in Pahrump. You know, meth heads will take anything that's metal to sell for scrap. Well, they were metal bells. Maybe it was Pahrump leprechauns. Maybe it was just bad luck. I don't know. I lost the dang bells. And, oh, well, gosh, come to think of it, I think maybe that kind of jinxed me, too. Because on top of all this, I'm also having car problems. I think I need a new alternator. And it's really stressing me out because I'm supposed to do this firehouse fundraiser party on Saturday. And then the day after it, we, my sister and I had planned a camping trip together. We're going to go off-roading into Death Valley into a very remote area. I mean, very remote. Well, how am I going to go out into a remote area of Death Valley with a busted alternator? I'm not. So thankfully, my mechanic in Vegas, even though at first he was like, oh man, I'm busy, I'm booked up. He said he would make room for me Wednesday morning. So that'll be tomorrow morning if you're watching this Tuesday. I'm going into Vegas first thing in the morning, hoping it's just a simple 
matter of getting a new alternator, which I understand that's not a super simple matter, but I just want to be road worthy so I can get on the dang road and go on this trip and friggin' relax. Because this has been one doozy of a week. Okay, anyway, now you know what happened. I went to YouTube jail for talking about something I shouldn't have been, and I won't talk about it again. My lips are sealed. <laughs>